Excuse the mess on screen and welcome back to the Doctor Who 42 channel where today I'm doing the video I said I would be making when I did the uh, collection update that I've just filmed uh, which is taking a look at the brand new B&M set of September 2021 or mid-August 2021 even though they were released in September um, and it, it's almost October now anyway but anyway um, let's take a look at them shall we so starting off with the Keys of Marinus set. Now I am going to be trying to fit uh, three, four unboxings into one video, four reviews even into one video. So I'm going to be, you know, snapping uh, really quickly through these things. Thankfully, quite a few of the figures are quite similar, um, so should be easy enough to get through them. But anyway, let's take a look. Keys of Marinus set. As you can see, absolutely brilliant. Ian Chesterton. I cannot believe we finally got a 60s companion. It's absolutely amazing. I'm really thrilled. Ian Cheston's actually, I think, one of everyone's favourites. Uh, but we've also got two Vault here, as you can see, which are really nice, and I haven't seen Keys of Marinus, but the designs of them are really nice, and from the synopsis on the back, which you can pause to read now, um, I just want to watch the Keys of Marinus even more now, so yeah, very excited to see that now, and very excited to get these figures, which you can see lovely pictures of, out of their box, which, uh, let's do that, shall we? Just uh, something I want to mention really quickly is that we now have dioramas in the three packs. Yes, can you believe it? Finally, Aljua has uh, taken the step into uh, putting these lovely dioramas, which are always absolutely fantastic, into the three packs as well. Whereas usually we just had a sort of stripy grey background. As you can see, this is a really sort of old church-like looking building, monastery looking building. I don't really know what it is because, like I said, I haven't seen the Keys of Marinus. But... It's really interesting, so yeah, I, I really need to see that story. Uh, but yeah, there you go, really nice uh, little diorama there. Let's start off with uh, the main figure for this set, which is absolutely brilliant, and I can't believe I'm saying it, but we've got Ian Chesterton. It's amazing. Can you believe it? We've finally got a William Russell figure. What a fantastic figure, as you can see. Obviously, brand new face sculpt, absolutely brilliant. The hair here as well, really nicely done, very much like it was seen in the story, his head's a bit stiff. Don't really want to twist it because his collar does feel like it's gonna rub some paint off if I twist it too far. Speaking of which, of course, we've got the lovely iconic Ian Chesterton suit, which is inaccurate. In the Keys of Marinus, he did wear the sort of cloak-like thing that he was wearing in Marco Polo, but character said that they wanted to put him in the suit even though uh, it's not what he wore in the Keys of Marinus because it's the more iconic look for Ian Chesterton. You know, when you think of Ian Chesterton, you think school teacher suit. Uh, but speaking, uh, or going into the closer detail of the suit, we've got a sort of greyish uh, blazer here, as you can see, with lovely texturing on there. I don't actually know if this is a reused sculpt, because I don't recognise this back texturing. Maybe it is reused and just retooled slightly, or maybe it's completely brand new. I think it's probably reused, but there we go. The tie here as well in the shirt, uh, really nice, well, really nice, a very odd design for the tie there, as you can see. Um, yeah, very odd, kind of suits the figure. I don't know if it's accurate, but there you go. It's there. And then, of course, trousers. We've got sort of pretty standard grey trousers here with uh, black or brown boots, sort of bordering on the two colours. Can't really decipher which it is, which have got brogues on them as well, which is very nice attention to detail. It's very unfocused attention to detail. Can you please, please focus in? Please? No? There we go. We've got... Come on. Oh, you know what? Just take my word for it. There's brogues on the shoes as well, which is very nice attention to detail. Right, so coming along with Ian Chesterton is the very out of focus Vord. Vord. <laughs> uh, Vord number two, to be specific, on the packaging, it says. Um, there's not a massive uh, amount of difference. There's actually still some of his packaging on his uh, ankle here. Let's just get rid of that. There we go. As you can see, really nice Vord hit. I, I really need to fix this focusing problem. The face sculpt here, or the head sculpt even, is absolutely fantastic. Really nicely detailed. You can see we've got the grills in here, these sort of big spike-looking things, the wide eyes, the triangle on here, which the other board, of course, has a circle, which we'll see later on. I think most of the body sculpt is uh, reused from the Axon Man, if I'm not mistaken, which I don't have, but is a really nice figure and really well reused here, actually. Uh, 
sort of the really nice material look, all sort of painted black. Of course, the iconic webbed hands. Now, I haven't actually seen the Cusimanus, like I've said multiple times, but I have seen pictures of the Vord, and these webbed hands are absolutely amazing, as are the feet, which you'll see later on, which are just ridiculous. Uh, the bandolier here, as you can see, with the knife holster, four little white dots on there as well, to sort of represent, I don't know, sort of pieces of metal to hold it together. We've also got one in the collarbone here as well. The legs here, very simple, nice little material, and the feet, which are huge swimming, um, if I just crack the, uh, the joints here real quick, uh, huge swimming fins, uh, which is absolutely amazing. They look brilliant. They are just... They're very easy to stand up, and this is just an absolutely amazing figure. We've also got, of course, the knife here, as you can see. Very simple, nice little brown design on it, and can be easily inserted into the hand of the Vord. Uh, actually, you need to go up the way, as you can see, rather than uh, through the top. It's just the way the two things have been moulded to... They fit together more nicely that way. Uh, very badly posed Vord there as well. I'll uh, take more attention, attention to. I'll pay more attention to detail um, when posing him uh, to go on the shelf. So finally, the uh, last figure for the set is the second Vord, as you can see here. Very similar to the first, but there are a few subtle differences that I'm going to point out. So of course, we've got the same standard. Really, <laughs> I can't get over these. They're really brilliant uh, swimming thin feet here, the webbed hands, all looking very, very uh, 60s monster-esque and uh, just all around brilliant. The banister, or the, um, not the banister, the sort of holster-esque um, bandolier here. Holster, as you can see here, with the four dots on the same. Uh, as you can see on the top here, we now have the circle on the head as opposed to the triangle on the other board. And we've got two dots on the waist here as opposed to one uh, in between the two collarbone there. And of course, we've got another knife to come alongside this board, which I'm going to slot into the holster now so that you can see uh, how that looks as well. Very nice, very clean, and an absolutely brilliant figure. Finally, we've got some more 60s monsters to stand up against our very own First Doctor and Ian Chesterton. So uh, let's just put him to the back and uh, take a look at the next set for the video. So the next set is going to be the Sensorite set. Now, I was actually more um, excited for the Sensorite set than I was. My head's very <laughs> distorted there in the uh, in the plastic. Uh, but I was actually more excited for this set than I was uh, the Keys of Manus set. And that being, I haven't actually seen the Keys of Manus, but I have seen this. Uh, I've seen the Sensorites, and I absolutely love the Sensorites. It's one of my favourite uh, Hartnell stories. And yeah, I've just, I have always loved it. So as you can see here, lovely First Doctor with two sensorites that we're gonna take a look at very soon. Uh, take a look at the back here. As you can see, it's a bit out of focus. Um, really nice pictures of it there. And then uh, a blurb of the sensorites should you want to read it. But let's take a look at this box's contents. Again, we've got actually a really nice uh, little diorama here, this time of the sense sphere seen in part one. Uh, really nicely done. We've got the sort of control monitors here, as you can see in the uh, circular hole there to, to walk through. More of a hole than a door, I'd say. And a little uh, edge of a console panel that you can see just there. Another really lovely diorama. And it really does uh, set off the set while it's in the box. So, taking a look at the first figure for the set, it is the first Doctor from the Sensorites. It's not actually from the Sensorites because he's got brown trousers, as you can see here. Whereas uh, the Doctor actually had sort of grey trousers in that episode. But I, I'm i actually more glad that they released uh, this figure with the brown trousers. Because I didn't get a hold of the original... For God, stay in focus. I didn't get the original... Um, uh, the original 13 Doctor set version with the brown uh, trousers here. But really, as per usual, nice face sculpt of William Hartnell here. Uh, with a very good paint job on this figure, actually. One of the best I've seen so far for B&M as well, so that's interesting. Hair here as well, really nicely painted with the white strands and the sort of darker grey wash underneath. Uh, the standard First Doctor coat here as well, and the sort of cravat here, which is more blue as opposed to the sort of black or grey that was usually seen. Uh, the shirt here as well, with the little pinstripes on it, as do the waistcoats have a pinstripe. I don't know. Maybe there isn't a waistcoat. No, there is no waistcoat. Never mind. 
Uh, I'm just being sort of delirious here. We've also got the, of course, uh, mono. Oh my! I've just had a, I've, I've just had a mind blank, and I can't remember what this is called. A mono, something or other. Um, but of course, we've also got the uh, trousers here as well, which is the main selling point of this figure. I'd say is the lovely sort of brownish, burnt orange trousers, which are really nice. Finally, we've got a, a more colourful First Doctor, and of course, the sort of standard brown. Uh, sort of shoe booty things on the bottom. A really nice first Doctor. Definitely my new favourite. And I'm really glad to uh, to have this little guy in uh, the collection. So, here we have the Sensorite Warrior. Or just Sensorite, as it's called on the packaging. Even though it is a Sensorite Warrior. As we can tell by the black stripes here on the... Um, on the sort of sleeves. Uh, but yes, uh, I absolutely love the Sensorites. Both the story and the design of the... Uh, creature they're absolutely brilliant this face sculpt really really sings out the sort of masked look that they had uh, in the story of course the sort of odd black eyes because the masks were um, obviously you know being worn by human lovely bald head here which feels really odd actually just seeing a, a bald figure and the absolutely brilliant bushy beard here we have as well which is a sort of grayer color as opposed to the uh sensorite elder that came in this pack as well who we'll take a look at next of course uh, i'm just trying to get some sort of stuff off the ankles there we go of course we've got the awesome blue sort of uh look for the costume which is absolutely iconic to the sensorites and i i absolutely love it it's just it's brilliant we've got the sort of thing here that uh, is on the uh well, the, the thing here that you put onto the the foreheads to sort of communicate almost uh, because of course the sensor rights are very telepathic and then we've got another very oddly footed <laughs> creature here as well uh, these are very duck looking feet they're they're just pretty much saucer like things uh, but of course it does make these figures very easy to stand and i just i love the fact that we've got the sensor rights seen as like i've said so many times already i absolutely love them and uh, yeah i just you you might not be able to tell with the camera but i i'm just absolutely thrilled to finally have some new 60s monsters and a sensorite of all things. Uh, but of course they also, like I mentioned, come with uh, their little sort of device thingies. I haven't watched Sensorite in ages, so I can't really recall if they're weapons or tools or whatever, but uh, yeah, these are the little things that are used by both the Doctor and Ian throughout the episode, and then also uh, used to take out the TARDIS lock in part one, which is absolutely brilliant, and of course, you know, you can get your old Sensorite friend here to hold it, although I don't know how easy it's going to be to manoeuvre it into his hand, so maybe I'll just... I'll try doing that later. Oh no, I've got it. There we go. So yes, absolutely brilliant. A Sensorite of all the things to get a Sensorite. It's absolutely amazing. Oh my, I just can't wait to get a closer look at these because they're just... Oh, fantastic. Uh, but let's take a look at the other one of the pack, who is just as brilliant, if not more so, as this one. We have the last figure of the set, which is the Sensorite Elder, as you can see here. Uh, pretty much no difference to the other Sensorite, except of course, uh, we now have a bit of a different skin tone and the beard is whiter. The most notable difference being we now have a sash on and we also have no uh, black rings around the uh, sleeve here as well although this arm is very dodgy i can feel it and actually looking past the bandolier i can see that the space between uh the, the sort of seam of the figure's body is a bit wide so yeah i'm i'm gonna be very careful with this arm because it does feel very loose uh, and then the legs here of course exactly the same and the feet here as well still just as brilliant uh plate like looking things that we've seen on the other sense right before another absolutely brilliant figure and of course he does come with another sort of ray device thingy uh but yes this this figure is actually probably one of the most customizable figures we've ever had because there's just so many things that you can do with this figure you can remove um one side of the sash so you just have a, a one-sided sash then you have a sensor right um i can't i, I upon starting this video i knew the names of all the different you know versions of uh, Sensorite, but I can't remember them now. So I know that you can remove one side of this sash to just have a one sash Sensorite that means something else. You can have, you can remove both the sashes to have just a normal Sensorite as opposed to the Warrior Sensorite here with the uh, black 
rims on the sleeve. And then I'm pretty sure there's also another sensor, right, where you can put a black sort of ring around the uh, collar there as well, and that means something else as well. So a really customizable figure, and another just absolutely brilliant one. We've got sensorites of all the things we thought we'd be getting in um, in the B&M sets. The sensorites were very low on my list, but here they are in the flesh, or sort of in the plastic, and uh, yeah, I can't wait to get these things up um, on display because they, they're just absolutely brilliant, and I, I have a soft spot for the sensorites, like I've already said, and yeah, I'll, I'm, I'm gonna go on to absolutely love these figures, and I think they're gonna grow on me even more because they're just, oh, they're brilliant. So, uh, try and move on quite quickly now, because I have been reviewing things for quite a while now. This is a big recording session, but we've got the History of the Dalek set number five, of course, with a standard 60s Dalek here, and a Mutant Scoop Dalek, which is one that I've been wanting character to do for a very long time now, and finally, they have. So, let's get this out of the packaging. Uh, I don't think I'll take a look at the diorama for this one, because it's a bit, more, a bit more boring. Oh, and of course, as per usual, I want to read the blurb. There you go. I'll uh, wait for that to get into focus and then we can have a look. So there you go. Just uh, have a quick read of that. So first taking a look at the standard 60s Dalek. This is a guy that we've seen many times before on the channel. There are some slight differences which I'll go through um, right now. So of course, standard 60s Dalek, of course, with the slim sort of um, slim fender. We've got the slats around here, which tell you that it's not from the dead planet or from, um, or it's not from the Daleks or the Dark Invasion of Earth. We've got an eye stalk here, the standard five ringed one with a smaller pupil, of course, for the sort of zoom in effect. The ear bulbs here, which are the egg cup ones and in a sort of yellow plastic, they're quite cloudy as well, which is kind of inaccurate. They should be more see-through, but I actually quite like the cloudy. It differs them a bit from other things. Finally, we're back to the gray in the um, shoulder section here as opposed to the white, which was for some very odd reason used on uh, the Daleks a couple sets ago. We had white gun boxes, which was very odd and inaccurate. So finally, we've got the gray back, which is correct. And yeah, it's pretty much just your standard happy little, well, not happy, but your standard 60s Dalek here. In addition to your uh, standard 60s Daleks, you also have the Mutant Scoop Dalek, which is the Dalek that I've wanted released for such a long time now. He is exactly the same as this guy, except for the obvious difference, which is the Mutant Scoop. Now, this is actually a really heavy plunger attachment, so you can see, I think mine's also a bit loose. Um, so, also, it's it's very easy to drop down, which I don't really mind, because most of the time they were sort of dropped down like that. The gun's also a bit loose on this one, which makes me think that, you know, this is loose as well as top heavy. But it's an absolutely fantastic sculpt, as you can see here. Uh, the bases are sort of standard 60s Dalek classic Dalek plunger, and then we've got this new sort of um, sieve-like thing on the end here, if it will go into focus. We've got this sieve-like thing, uh, which would carry, you know, the Dalek mutant to go into the, um, to go into the casing. It's a real, real shame that we didn't get um, a mutant, you know, in, in the, the scoop. Um, but I'm sure there's going to be loads and loads of customs of that, so uh, yeah. And it's not too difficult to do, I wouldn't think. You just sort of need to grab the uh, Reconnaissance Dalek uh, mutant. But anyway, a fantastic figure. Like I said, one I've wanted characters to do for so long. And finally, it's here, and it doesn't disappoint. It's absolutely amazing. So yeah, a, a really brilliant Dalek there, and I, I'm absolutely... I'm chuffed. It's, it's fantastic. And so, at long last, the final set for the video, and it is the History of the Dalek set number seven. Uh, I don't know what happened to number six, because we've just gone from, you know, number five to number seven. I think... What's in between? Just give me a second. Uh, that was Power of the Daleks. Evil of the Daleks. So, yeah. Between... Uh, set number five was Power of the Daleks. Set number seven is Day of the Daleks. And between... We haven't had a set number six. And between set numbers... Between Power of the Daleks and Day of the Daleks is... Uh, Evil of the Daleks, and I don't, I think they just haven't released anything for that because they can't really do anything. But anyway, um, here it is, Day of the Dalek set, which is absolutely brilliant. We've got a brand new re-release of the um, Day of the Daleks Supreme here, as you can see, but with a new paint job, which is much more accurate and I really like. And then a gunmetal grey Dalek here as well. Now, I actually wasn't going to get this set originally, but like I mentioned in, I think, my last video, I had such a hard time 
tracking down these B&M sets. So when I finally got there and it was here and I basically went what the hell and picked this up as well as the uh, the other ones. So yeah, I wasn't intending to uh, pick up this set originally, but I have done and it doesn't disappoint. It's absolutely brilliant and let's crack it open so that we can take a closer look at these these works of Doctor Who art. So here is the Dalek Supreme from Day of the Daleks. And now I have to say, having the figures actually out of the packaging and in hand, I don't regret picking up the set at all, even though I wasn't intending to originally. It's it's absolutely marvellous. This Dalek is absolutely fantastic. And uh, let's go through, you know, some of, the, some of the key points about it. So we've seen on my channel before the other version of this Dalek with the black in the... Uh, in the sort of ring section here, which is uh, less accurate. It is meant to be this sort of gold. Um, we've also got a lighter color of gold, um, which is more accurate again. Uh, the other the other gold was darker and um, more sort of bronzy gold. This is the more accurate lighter gold. Of course, as you can see, we've now got, of course, because it's a 70s Dalek, the iris or the pupil even in the, uh, in the eye stock there. We've got the clear Mini Cooper lights here, as you can see. And something that's really nice is the fact that the base is now thinner on the bottom than it is on the top, and that the top of the base, or the fender, is now gold, uh, which is more accurate as well. Or maybe it's actually... No, it is gold. It is gold. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm so glad to actually have this figure in the collection. It wasn't one, like I've mentioned several times already, that I was intending on getting, but now that it's here and in hand, I'm really glad that I did decide to pick it up, because it's really, really nice and... Yeah, I absolutely love it. And this is gonna, this really is a figure that just pops and you know, you're instantly drawn to it when it's uh, in view. And now at long last, the final figure for this video and the final figure for this recording session is the standard gunmetal gray Dalek from Planet, oh, from Day of the Daleks, which I <laughs> absolutely love. I was thinking, Oh, you know, gunmetal grey Dalek, so what? It's basically just like a slightly differently painted Genesis Dalek. No, it's completely different. It feels completely different in hand, and it's just, it's really nice. We've got a really, really dark colour scheme here. It is metallic, which is really nice to see as well. And uh, the gun here as well, fully black, fully just sort of dark and mysterious like these Daleks were. The first Daleks in colour, so you had to go for Gold Supreme. You know, it would just it would have been wrong not to. And then, of course, the, the base here as well, or the fender, the new sort of inwards at the bottom design. And overall, you know, not maybe the most interesting Dalek or the most eye-catching Dalek, but definitely one that is absolutely brilliant. And I'm really, really glad to have this in the collection because, quite frankly, it's fantastic. So, yes, to sum it up in the word, it is that. So thank you so much for watching my sort of big roundup of this uh, of uh, September's B&M sets, all four of them, even though I was only intending to originally get three. Um, and finally, everything that's been sitting in my room for seven months is out of its boxes and out into the fresh oxygen of planet Earth. So now I've got a real issue to figure out where I'm going to put these things, and thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do some consider subscribing. Uh, it'll be worth your weight in gold, or Supreme Dalek, I guess. Yeah, that was awful. But uh, anyway, thanks so much for watching. And I guess I'll see you in the next video, uh, hopefully. So, yeah. Goodbye.